Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. To the untrained eye, it's nothing more than a cold, hard, 4x6 block of wood. However, in the eyes of a gifted woodcarver, this seemingly ordinary chunk of wood yearns to be something more. This fluid, lifelike sculpture of a Deschutes Redside Rainbow Trout is the extraordinary handiwork of Rich Greinert, an award-winning fish carver from Spokane who, believe it or not, started carving wood just four years ago. I guess it's something that I'd wanted to do, and I asked my wife for a, uh, or she asked me one year what I wanted for Christmas, and I said I wanted to learn how to carve, and she got me a gift certificate for a place called the Whittler's Nook, and it was just something at that point in my life, it's like I wanted to do something with my hands, I guess, and that was something that I, I thought would be uh, a worthwhile pursuit, and uh, I'd always been, or had been for a long time in business, and uh, worked operating some video stores and, and things. Anyway, it, uh, it wasn't satisfying in the same way that it is to work with your hands and actually make something. I ha didn't have any experience working with wood, so I had a lot to learn as far as uh, uh, how to use a knife, uh, how to get the cuts to, to go and, and not cut your, yourself at the same time. So that, you know, safety and, and skill are, were both things that, that came into play. And it took a while, but it's something that, it's not a difficult thing, it's just a matter of doing it and paying attention to what you're doing. With the guidance of some noteworthy area wood carvers, Rich quickly developed both his woodworking skills and the techniques of carving. Along the way, he discovered early on, it was carving fish he enjoyed the most. Now they have become the focal point of his work. The question is, why fish? I really don't know, it's just something that I wanted to carve and I carve ducks and I carve songbirds and, and, and other things, but fish is what I really love to carve. They're just something about them. The shapes, the colors, just all of that. Is, so I really don't know. It's just, it's just my favorite thing to carve. Another reason why Rich is so passionate when it comes to carving fish is the fact that they represent a considerable challenge to any woodcarver, but especially to someone hoping to duplicate in wood the real thing. For me, when I, one of the things that I try and capture is the essence of the fish in the shape or in the body. And I worked as a graphic designer for years, and uh, that's a two-dimensional world. Graphic design is by definition, it's, it's two-dimensional. So things are flat and you're working with a different type of space. And I didn't think that I could see three-dimensionally. But since I started carving fish, I find that I see or I look at things differently. But it's really important for me to get the, the attitude, the the body so that it looks like it's bending in the right place and it's fluid and has that fish-like quality. And to get that in a piece of wood, because a fish is obviously made out of mostly muscle, you know, it's, it's a whole different thing. Carving a realistic fish out of a block of wood is akin to swimming upstream to spawn. It's difficult at best. But according to Rich, the key is an ample supply of quality references. I try and get fish, so when I go fishing or when my friends go fishing, and a lot of people know that I do this now, so they'll bring me a fish and, and I'll put it in the freezer, and then I can uh, take measurements off of it and draw a pattern and, and look at it and open the mouth and poke it and, and, and find out just what it is. Uh, that's real important is to have the good reference. Sometimes I go out to the fish hatchery uh, on the north side of town here and I watch the fish and uh, look at the way they move. and and look at the colors and things and watch them for a while. And then also uh, with painting, I always like to take photographs. If you get a good photograph, then it, it gives you a good basis to go and, and I try and reproduce that. So it gives me the colors. And fish have a lot of colors in them. And in addition to the color, it'll show you like the, the action of the fin or the way the fins you know, go into the body and the way the, the fish moves with their fins. That's an important part of carving is to get the fins so they look like it's natural. Given the delicate nature of these intricate sculptures, choosing just the right wood can be critical. I use uh, Tupelo gum as the wood, and it comes from uh, swamps down in Louisiana, Florida, Georgia. So it's all, it all comes from, from that area of the country. So it's, it's kind of an interesting wood, but it holds the detail 
real well and yet it carves nice and so it's and it doesn't have a lot of grain to it so it's uh it makes a real good wood for carving once the proper wood is selected and the inspiration is provided in this case a rainbow trout the carving process from block to trout is much better than any fish story it does it starts exactly with a block of wood and uh, then i take and i'll have a pattern that i've made off of a fish and i'll draw this pattern onto the block of wood and I draw a top profile down the center of the wood and I draw a side profile onto the side and I'll take and cut side profiles and then take and using hot glue stick them back on so that the block stays square then I'll take and turn it and I'll cut the other profile and then when I pull those pieces of wood off I'll end up with a it's where I start carving anyway I'm done with the bandsaw at that point and I start carving and it's real square and blockish and I start grinding it off with either a power grinder or rasps and files, or uh, sometimes I even use like a sheetrock shapers. They work good for getting a real smooth flow to the body of the fish if you want to get that curve and that fluid motion. Then basically you work your way down. You start with the coarser, bigger tools and you work down to where you get down to the real fine uh, little tools like perhaps a dentist would use, you know, little rotary tools and knives and chisels. And you start doing the, the detail that you find around the mouth and, and on the bodies and on the heads of the fish. And I carve the fins separately, so the fin isn't carved originally with the body of the fish. Uh, and I do that so that the grain is going the long way with the fin, and it, it gives it more strength. So once you get the pieces carved then and everything so it'll fit together, then you can I take and I paint them with gesso so everything's just white and that's when I start painting using basically just a, an acrylic paint and an airbrush and hand brushes and start trying to match the photograph that I have of the fish to the piece of wood that I've got there. But I always start out with a white gesso base so that the colors are kind of vibrant. And then oftentimes on that I'll put uh, on certain types of fish, particularly rainbow trout, I'll use a lot of silver along the base to make it so that they have that shiny, reflective quality that uh, a lot of rainbow trout and cutthroat trout tend to have. Generally, a single fish carving can take upwards to 100 hours to complete. It's a huge investment of time and effort, but for Rich Greinert, the rewards have gone well beyond expectations. It seems that uh, fishermen are interested in, in my work and I uh, assume or I take that to be a compliment or, or related to the fact that they look realistic and it relates to a fish that, that they may have caught at some point in time. So to me that's very encouraging that I'm on the right path because if I can make a fisherman think that it looks okay, well then I, I think it's all right. Well, when I first started out, I, I had no idea that I'd be doing this sort of a hyper-realistic fish sculpture that I do. I, I didn't even know that they, they did them, but as I got into it and learned more and more, it just kind of drew me in, so, and I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been a fun journey. If you have a story idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.